And also, I think there has been a climate of fear with the IDSA panel that the IDSA panel has helped generate, where um, frontline physicians are afraid to deviate out of that because um, they don't want to be called to the mat by their institutions for overprescribing antibiotics. It, Do- doc- doctors are very afraid, and I, I know. I, for example, I have a, a friend who was uh, diagnosed with Lyme disease after being di- uh, diagnosed with multiple sclerosis for five years, and she is very, very sick, and she is being treated by a physician in her community who is not known for being a Lyme literate doctor, but is just her doctor, and he is treating her longer term, but he is very afraid to buck the insurance company. He has told her she has to pay out of pocket for this medicine because he doesn't want to be identified as being one of the doctors who who will uh, who will go uh, this this alternate course he he's a and 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 his story is very common Pam Weintraub is the author of a new book about Lyme disease called Cure Unknown Inside the Lyme Epidemic. She joins us this hour along with Chris Newby, one of the producers of a film about the Lyme disease controversy called Under Our Skin. We're going to open up our phone lines in just a moment, too. Let's go ahead and give you that number if you have a question for either Chris Newby or Pam Weintraub. Here's the number. It's 866-733-6786, 866-733-6786. Or you can email us your thoughts or questions at forum at KQED. Dot O-R-G. It's ongoing for, for your families both, right? This is, uh, this is a lifetime deal. Pam Weintraub? Well, I hope it's not going to be a lifetime deal, but my older son still has some symptoms, and my younger son was rebitten by a tick in, um, last summer. And uh, I, because we saw the rash, we treated it early, and I thought, wow, that's great. But he actually failed the early treatment, and he got pretty sick again. And Chris Newby, for you and, and your husband, is it something that you will continue to live with, do you think? Well, my husband, uh, luckily, is free of symptoms, so he's my role model. I, I um, Every time I go off antibiotics for more than three months, uh, the creeping neurological symptoms come back, so I, I've had to go back on antibiotics. But I'm hopeful if we can open up the thinking and put some money into the research that there'll be better cures. I mean, I just think... Long-term antibiotics are not a cure. They're sort of a blunt instrument, but they do take people who are di- completely disabled and dysfunctional and make them functional human beings with a good quality of living again. And some of those symptoms can be really acute. Some of the people that are portrayed in your film are, are really completely disabled. Oh, yes, and, you know, that's uh, I think that's not that uncommon. Uh, what I base going on, after we went all around the United States and interviewed, you know, hundreds and hundreds of patients, it's... Sometimes they're not as visible. A lot of times it's an invisible disease, but they can be very serious and debilitating. Chris Newby, producer of the film Under Our Skin, and Pam Weintraub, author of Cure Unknown, Inside the Lyme Epidemic. If you have questions or concerns about Lyme disease and about how it's treated, we invite you to call us now, and we'll take your calls when we come back for our break. Here's the number again. It's 866-733-6786, 866-733-6786. Or you can email us your questions at forum at kqed.org. That's forum at kqed.org. Back with more with Pam Weintraub and Chris Newby in just a moment. This is Forum on KQED. Welcome back to Forum. I'm Dave Iverson. Our topic this hour... Lyme disease, how it's diagnosed, how it's treated, some of the challenges that are are inherent both for patients and for the medical community in that. Our guests include Pam Weimtraub, who has a new book about this called Cure Unknown Inside the Lyme Epidemic. She and her husband, along with her two sons, have contended with Lyme disease for a number of years. We're joined also by Chris Newby, who is one of the producers of a new film about Lyme disease called Under Our Skin. She and her husband also have contended with Lyme disease. We welcome your calls and thoughts on this subject, too. You can join us now at 866-733-6786. 866-733-6786, or you can email us at forum at kqed.org. Let's go to our first caller this morning. It's Gabrielle, who joins us in San Francisco. Gabrielle, go ahead. Hi. Um, I am a chronically infected Lyme disease patient. I grew up in the Bay Area in Marin County, and um, I've been with Lyme disease for 20 years now. 
Um, I uh, just read Pamela Weintraub's book and this summer and wanted to thank her for the information she's trying to get out there. I um, remember being bit by a tick sometime between 10 and 12, and um, but I had only heard of Lyme disease in the context of the northeastern uh, seaboard, and I remember thinking when I got bit by that tick that, gosh, I wonder if this could give me Lyme disease. But living on the West Coast, I was never, um, I never had any flu-like symptoms. I never got the bullseye rash. I never got any of those initial telltale signs. Um, 20 years later, I was diagnosed in 2005 after dealing with severely debilitating other chronic illnesses for a number of years. So I just wanted to, again, thank Pamela and uh, Chris for the work they're doing trying to get information out and stress the need, um, the urgent need for um, education and information. Like, even today, there's just so much misinformation out there. Gabrielle, thanks. Thanks for the call and the observation. Sounds like one of the many people from your film, Chris Newby. I mean, that sort of complex series of symptoms and many, many years before a a definitive diagnosis was made. Yeah, and a lot of times they're um, given misdiagnoses of syndromes like uh, chronic fatigue syndrome or fibromyalgia, and once they get that label, they don't keep looking for answers. So, I mean, one offshoot of the film, I hope, is that people will reconsider um, a Lyme diagnosis. Arjuman, sorry if I'm not pronouncing that correctly, and Gilroy joins us next. Arjuman, go ahead. Yes, how are you doing, Doctor? Good, thanks. My name is Arjuman, and uh, I have a question regarding one of the very closest family relative who I know that probably having uh, some sort of symptoms for the past a couple of years. The only thing I need to know, I just don't want to go into the detail. I just need to know there are so many doctors and facilities out there now promising that they cure and they have, you know, um, the diagnosis of the Lyme disease. But we don't know where to go. We don't know where to look and what will be the proper guidance for people like us or people like, you know, people who have some suffering from Lyme disease and don't, don't even know where to go, where to look, because since this is so ambiguous, so don't uh, so many people know about it and everybody likes like promising, um, and we yeah. don't know, need to know proper guidance. Where should we go to treat Lyme disease? Arjuman, thank you. Thanks for the, the call. Um, thoughts on that, Pam Weintraub, about where you go for, for information, well, general guidance when you might have to contend with this disease? First of all, if you have a situation that's very confusing or complicated, I would urge you, in addition to seeking a Lyme literate doctor, to see, seek uh, doctors who can do a differential diagnosis for many, many other conditions, just as you have to be careful that... Uh, that uh, you may have been misdiagnosed with something else and you really have Lyme, you also have to be really sure that you don't have... There are so many diseases out there. Lyme is one of them. If you have um, if you have done that differential diagnosis and everything else, ha- you know, other things have been ruled out and you're, you're sure because you don't maybe have... A, a, you don't fit totally within the... Um, the classic mold that you have a Lyme disease, you should go to a, uh, a, and you haven't been able to get help from your your mainstream doctors, then you 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 would need to cross the line to a uh, a Lyme literate physician who would be willing to uh, uh, look at a more inclusive definition of Lyme disease, and if they feel that you have Lyme disease, may, may be willing to treat you with longer courses of antibiotics and look for other infections as well. We mentioned earlier that we had invited a number of physicians who do take a more narrow view of how the disease can best be diagnosed and best be treated, and that we were unable to do so, that um, we had invited a number of physicians here in the Bay Area, but they had declined to participate. But we are joined now by Eugene Shapiro. He's professor of pediatrics, epidemiology, and public health at Yale uh, School of Medicine, and he was on the panel that wrote uh, the guidelines that we were talking about earlier, the Infectious Disease Society of America guidelines, which initially proposed a more a narrow uh, course of treatment. Dr. Shapiro, thanks for calling in. Sure. What's your view at this point? We mentioned earlier that the ISDA, the or IDSA, rather, the organization you are a part of, was now looking again at the guidelines. Are you revising your approach in terms of how you think this disease can best be treated? Well, uh, 
what I, w- what I want to emphasize is that the, w- there are more than 25 years of good scientific study out there, many studies uh, that the guidelines are based on, and what is, what is happening now is a review, which in fact happens routinely every couple of years, of all the guidelines uh, put out by the Infectious Disease Society of America. 